Hi folks. So we're talking about protecting integrity and specifically we're going to talk about some extra things that you can do to um, put defenses in place to protect the integrity of files on the system. And there's lots of reasons why you would want to think about this carefully and provide a layered approach to your security to actually provide um, different kinds of controls. You put different controls in place that will protect the integrity of your files and your system. So as you'll recall, integrity is part of the CIA triad, which is the goals that cybersecurity um, aims to achieve, or some of those goals include confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And in terms of integrity, the thing that we, you know, we want to make sure that people can't modify or delete resources on our systems. So we don't want people to be able to add new users to systems or delete or change log files. And so integrity is one of the most important um, goals that most organizations have in terms of cybersecurity. So integrity is so important that there are lots of different security controls that you can put in place that contribute to the integrity of your system. So there are standard file permissions, there's network controls, things like firewalls or application firewalls, um, services um, that you can put in place that have different configurations for protecting access to things and authentication and access controls and all, all that stuff uh, are things that you can use to protect the integrity of your systems. Um, but there's some specific extra um, features that you can use that add an extra layer. So if we're looking at the integrity of files on a Linux system, we have the standard Unix file permissions and they're abbreviated ACLs, so an access control list that is just in terms of the person who owns the file, the group that the file belongs to, and everyone else in the system. So you've got these read, write, execute permissions. Um, and you know we'll talk about that another time. You've got extended attributes, so there are other kinds of metadata that you can attach to files, and that includes uh, system attributes that you can use for access control lists. So there are like extended access control lists on modern Linux systems, and you can also use security attributes, which are security labels you can attach to files, uh, and that um, can be used thing for, for setting mandatory access controls for like SE Linux and file capabilities and a bunch of other things that, again, we'll talk about another time. But there's also standard file attributes, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So standard file attributes apply to all files on a um, system, and different file systems will support different kinds of attributes, and therefore will have different security features that are available depending on the file system that you're using on your hard drive, for example. And two of the most interesting file attributes on a Unix system uh, is the immutable attribute and the append-only attribute. So immutable attribute means that you can't modify, link, or delete a file, even if you're root. So it's a protection that will stop root from, from doing it. Of course, root could can you know has usually has the permission to change these things. I say usually because there are ways you can limit what root can do. Um, but it does add an extra layer of defense. Uh, there's append only, which means that when you do have permission to write to the file, you can only write to the end of the file. So let's have a little look at you know what this can look like. So just see we've got no files here if we create a new file and um, look at it um, so we've got a, a file so touching a file just like creates it if it doesn't already exist or it updates its file stamp on a Linux system and then we're doing a directory listing and asking it to show us the details of all the files um, with a, a long listing so that shows like all these details including the, the standard Unix file permissions, which again, we'll talk about later. Uh, but what you can do, if you use list attribute, you can see there's this uh, list of 
um, attributes, flags that are associated with this file. Um, and the only one that's set is an E, but actually it's not very secure. The, the E is not particularly interesting. But what we can do is change attribute. Um, and we can change that attribute to add, say, for example, immutable. Um, and we need to be root to set up. Um, and and if we are um, once we've set that, we can see that it now has this i flag. So the that means that it's an immutable file. So now if we try and write to that file, um, let's say we just try to. Um, So it says on the screen here that it's read only. So obviously it's not going to actually let us make any modifications. If we try and save those, uh, it will complain that actually we can't do that. Uh, and if we, even if we try and force it, it's, it can't do it. So we'll quit without saving. Um, so what about root? Can root edit that file? Still says it's read only. So even as root, if we try to write to that file, we can't. We can't do it because it's an, an immutable file. So we have to quit without saving. So we um, basically this immutable flag is stopping us from changing the file. Even root. Um, and if you know someone who or you share a, a Linux system with someone who is, um, you know, there's a good chance they might not know about this feature, so it's a, it's a nasty prank you can pull on someone is to create a file that they can't delete if they don't know what they're doing. So um, what we can do, so we've taken away the um, immutable, that's what this minus i means, we could add uh, append only. And now, uh, if we try to edit the file again, even as root, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're going to try and write to the file. It says it can't do it. So I think just you could try it. So let's just try anyway. Can't do it. Okay, so let's quit without saving. Um, so we can't do it. But what we can't, so we can't edit the file. What about if we something like this? So. What we're doing here is we're using the echo command uh, to say hello. So what echo does by itself is it just writes out to standard output uh, the thing. Um, we're going to send the results of that to our test file. Uh, we're not allowed to because we can't write to the file. If you put, so when you use uh, one greater than sign, what it does is it replaces the entire file with whatever you send. If you use two greater than um, symbols, what that means is it appends to the end of the file. And now we can do that. Uh, so now if we look at um, cat test one, which prints it to the screen, it did work. So we can write to it, but only if we're appending. So that's quite nice if you imagine something like log files, where you want to protect the log files from being modified but you still want to be able to write to the end of a log file, then that's kind of like an ideal scenario of why you might set it to be append only. Right, so... Um, another thing that you can do to protect the integrity of a file, or of files or file systems, there's kind of an extra layer of something that you can do on top, is to use read-only file systems. So what you can do is actually mount the file system into the operating system in a way where you can access the files, but you can't write to them. So what you can do is mount most of the operating system that way so that it can't be written to. And just the things that you expect to change, like the user's home directory, mount that as read-write. Um, 
you could go a step further and use read-only media. So if you use DVD or a Blu-ray, for example, which is like a literal an op optical disc that you can't write to, then you know that protects it. But no one, you know, it's not really common to use optical discs in that way anymore. Hard drives are cheap. Um, but what you can actually do is have network-attached storage, so you could have your full operating system um, on the network, and you can use the network configuration to basically say uh, that it's a read-only so that these other computers can mount this file system but in a, only for read-only. Um, and you can even do it locally. So I'll show you a little um, trick of the sorts of things that you can do. So in um, on Linux, one of the weird and wonderful things you can do is bind mount, which is when you take a directory that's already on your system and you mount it so that it also appears somewhere else in your system, uh, that, that directory structure. But what you uh, and when you do that, you can change the um, options for the way that it's mounted to be read only, and you can even bind mount it on mount, bind mount it onto itself, so that you end up with the same thing but in a read only way. So I'll show you how you can do that. So uh, you can do sudo mount. So we could mount etc onto itself um, and tell it the options to use is read on, uh, bind mount. So that means to take the first directory and mount it onto the second location. In this case, it's the same place. And you could say read only, uh, which is another mount option to say make it read, read only. And when we do that, now if you look at the etc directory, uh, we could try and do something like uh, write to a file. Um, let's say as root, we're going to edit, you know, some some new file. Um, and you can see here, Vi is already telling us that it's read only, so it's not going to want us to do that. Um, but let's. Just try and write this new file. Um, so let's create some new content first, and then try and write the file. And it says that it can't. Um, so it will basically stop us from um, from editing anything on that whole um, in that whole directory. So there's so. Without changing the way the disks are mounted, we now can't edit anything in the etc directory, which is on a Linux system or any Unix system uh, is most Unix systems is where all the configuration files are stored. Um, and so we could do something. <clears throat> well, let's just check. If you run the mount command, it tells us about um, all of the mounted file systems, and we can use grep to just pull out a specific line. We're just interested in any line that has etc in it. And you can see here that it's actually um, mounted uh, this disk on etc, um, and it's mounted as read-only. Um, so the, then if, we, um, if at some stage we want to be able to um, edit it again, what we need to do is sudo umount which is unmount etc. And now, if we look at the same thing, we might not. There's no line in there to do with etc anymore. It's just the um, the root um, system, which is read write on this on my system, as it normally is. Um, an example of um, this being used a lot is on Android devices, for example. So on Android, often the root of the file system is mounted as uh, read-only. Um, and there's a bunch of other places where it's used, but it's an extra layer of defense that you can use so that uh, to add some extra protection. So there you have it. There's some um, extra layers of integrity protection that you can use and some things to think about when you're thinking about how you can protect the files on your system.